Welcome to another episode of the Warning Track Podcast. I'm your host, Cody Emerson, and alongside me is my lead analyst, Caleb Houghton. And whoa, whoa. <laughs> I got it right this week. <laughs> and Gina Durazio. Um, guys, I know it's we woke up to some really cold weather, uh, but besides that, how are we doing? Uh, I'm doing fine. I mean, as you could probably tell, I'm dealing with a bit of a sinus problem. I feel better today. I, I mean, I really do. I feel a lot better. Probably should not have went to the Ball State football game on Thursday. That was probably That's your bad. Biggest mistake decision. of the week. <laughs> yeah, and you wore shorts there. That was probably your. Hey, other you know, I too. I did what I could. <laughs> Gina, how are you? I'm good. You know, I'm not a fan of this cold weather. Woke up 35 degrees. You know, I heard it's supposed to snow tomorrow, so I'm not really excited about that. But. Otherwise, getting ready to talk some baseball and uh, getting back in action here. Oh, yeah, we're always ready to talk some baseball, regardless if it's, like, negative 20 or if it's 100. I'm always ready to talk some baseball. All right, as we've been away for a couple weeks, um, but there has been tons of baseball news to talk about, and we're just going to dive straight into it. Um, we're going to talk about the postseason, obviously, and the World Series, and because that's the main story that's headlining baseball right now. We're going to get to that later in the show. Um, but first, there has been some more changes made to a couple of the teams, specifically postseason teams, three postseason teams um, who are now sitting at home watching the World Series have changed managers. So let's dive right into them real quick. Um, in our last episode, we already mentioned one of these teams, the Boston Red Sox. They have now found their manager, um, Alex Cora, who was the favorite to get the job. Um, he ended up getting it. Obviously, he still has some some other work to do as he's with the Houston Astros right now as their bench coach. Um, but, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, my gosh. I'm kind of, <laughs> Caleb, you may be getting me sick. You may be getting me sick. I hope that's not the case. But, all right. Uh, Gina, we'll start with you. Uh, all right. What can Alex Cora bring to this Red Sox club um, next season and in years for the years down the road that John Farrell couldn't? Well, this Red Sox team needs a new culture, you know, as a whole. Um, if you remember, uh, during the regular season, there was an instance where um, mediocre pitcher Wade, I think, what was his name? Wade Miley. He was pulled out of the game by Farrell, and, you know, it's just the camera pulls on a scene where it's like Miley yelling and screaming in the mm -hmm. dugout at Farrell, and Farrell just, like, takes it. You know, it's, like, no big deal, but you need a manager who sticks up for himself, and you need a manager who is strong, and that's what really, like, got the Red Sox organization thinking, like, do we have a weak manager? Do we need to change it up? And, um, you know, he's coming. Uh, Alex Cora is coming from a very successful ball club, and even though he has no um, – major league experience, you know, besides being a bench mm -hmm. coach. He is um, he is the manager for the Puerto Rico national team. Oh, so, I forgot about that. So I think that brings, you know, a new element to this team. And also, um, you know, other players that have been with Alex before have described him as, you know, intense and as a good communicator. Um, so I really think that's what this Red Sox team mm -hmm. needs. Yeah, Caleb, well, what do you think that Cora can bring to this Red Sox team? Well, I definitely think he can bring the winning mentality back to Boston. Because, I mean, uh, John Farrell was not, or as Boston calls him now, John Farewell. But <laughs> <laughs> he really wasn't much nickname. of the communicator in that organization. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, like, as Gina mentioned, he didn't really do much of the talking. He really just kind of, whatever. One thing that I like about Alex Cora, he played for the Red Sox. Mm -hmm. 2007, magical season, Red Sox mm -hmm. win the World mm -hmm. Series, a sweep of Colorado. Yep, broke the curse finally. Right. So, I mean, he obviously knows not only what the Red Sox are looking for, but what he's going to want out of his players. He's going to want to repeat that mm -hmm. moment right there. <clears throat> but uh, another thing, John Farrell was not a postseason manager. Yeah. He was able to get him there and then do nothing with it. I mean, come on. Do you, did you see the pitching staff? Uh, the pitching, you know, that they yeah. had this for this postseason? It was loaded. It's obviously, you had Chris yeah. Sale. Um, making then, his first postseason start, and he, obviously, I don't think Chris Sale was ready for the moment just yet. Um, but yeah, as you mentioned, the pitching staff was kind of—they had the bulk of their uh, staff was really good. Yet David Price, who I think they've kind of—I would have personally loved to see what David Price would have given them as a starter. Um, I still think he's got it as a starter. I don't buy the kind of long reliever type role that they were having him do. I don't know if that's more on the pitching coach or if John Farrell 
was like overseeing that or whatever. But yeah, it's just time for a new face. Um, the he the only postseason success success. Oh my gosh, I'm struggling this morning. <laughs> that Farrell had was obviously I believe it was his first or second year when he won the World Series with that team, which mm-hmm. that team was just loaded and talented ridiculously. Um, I think this team can use maybe a bit more talent, and I'm not going to blame Farrell 100% for that, but they obviously could have went deeper in multiple postseason. They just haven't got the job done. So it's time for a new face, and hopefully Alex Cora can bring the Red Sox back. Because when the Red Sox are playing postseason baseball, it's fun to watch, mm-hmm. personally. Oh, yeah. I remember, I if I had to pick an AL team to watch, I'm a Braves fan, personally, but if I had to pick an AL team that I kind of root for, well, it's probably shifting over to Houston now, but back then it was Boston because I just liked um, the winning culture that they had, and just it was fun to see them right. succeed. And, and one thing that the Astros have really come out about Alex Cora, everybody in that organization knows him like family. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I mean... Oh, yeah, he he's a great family guy. So I mean, but like now, it this is Alex Cora's team, and I can't wait to see what happens. Yeah, well, definitely exciting to see mm-hmm. how he t- makes this team better going forward. All right, another team in search of a n- another manager is the Nationals, who announced um, earlier about a week, week and a half ago, something like that, um, <coughs> that he they will not retain. Uh, manager Dusty Baker, who only spent two seasons with the team. Um, The Nats, although he failed to get the Nats out of the divisional round, which this team cannot seem to get out of the divisional round. I don't know what it is. They have all the talent in the world. Um, I thought they were poised to give the Dodgers a run for their money in the NLCS. I thought it was going to be Nationals-Dodgers. Probably would have been better than the Cubs. Oh, totally. (laughs) Would have been better to watch, too. But they just couldn't get it done. And so Caleb did, in your opinion, did Baker deserve to get fired? Or, and what does this mean for the Nationals team going forward? The guy had two seasons and they fired him. No, he didn't deserve it. <laughs> I mean, he, two years? Granted, I mean, as a Cubs fan, Joe Madden in two years took us to a World Series and we won the freaking thing. But. I mean, look at who they faced, though. Mm -hmm. They faced a young Dodgers team in 2016 that was just poised for what they're doing now. And then last year, or I'm sorry, this year, this past postseason, they lost in five games again to the defending world champions. It's a a hard task. (laughs) Granted, they were both at home, but Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to figure out the way that they do it. And... Dusty Baker was loved by all of his players. Oh, yeah. Like everybody yes. in the organization was yes. like, "Oh my gosh, what just happened?" I want to I want to shift those what this means for the Nationals because a lot of people might think I'm crazy, but I think the Nationals are preparing for a rebuild. Really? I mean, if you look at it, Zimmerman's 37 and probably not playing for much longer. I mean, Bryce, Bryce, <clears throat> Bryce Harper has yeah. probably one more season left with them. Yeah, people and Bryce Harper's a, a free team. agent. Yeah. Like he's probably not coming back. And at this point, and the only pitchers that they have that are long deal is Scherzer and Scherzer and Strasburg, which people will say, "Wow, that's good." But Gio Gonzalez, Tanner Roark, and Edwin Jackson are all probably gone this next season, because I read on Bleacher Report uh, like last week saying that uh, the Nationals were going to try to trade Gio for prospects. Gio is getting up there in age, so yeah. I mean, he's still pitching lights out like he has been for most of his career, but couldn't hurt to get younger. Um, the, it's going to be very interesting. I think you bring up the Bryce Harper thing, a free agent. Most people are bringing up a team like New York. or He wants to be in the big-time spotlight, like if he goes out to, I don't know, a big city like L.A., New York, Chicago. Wherever. Chicago. <laughs> Maybe. You guys would love He to has hinted him. that he, he wanted hope- to be a he Cub. Did. So He is hinting. So that, it's definitely – Interesting to see what the future holds for the national team. Gina, let's get you in on this. Um, What does this mean for the Nationals, and do you believe that he deserved to get fired? Well, as you mentioned before, the Nationals have just hit this slump. I mean, Mm -hmm. they they can't seem to win a divisional series. But also notable, this is their fourth manager in six seasons. And I think what they're trying to make it clear is that they want someone who can take them through a postseason, is that they want someone to, like, look to deliver. 
And, you know, they just they need a manager who can bring them through a postseason. I, I don't necessarily think I agree with the firing of Dusty Baker since he only had two seasons. You know, he was good, and obviously, mm-hmm. as Caleb mentioned, well-liked by the whole ball club. But the Nationals organization has made it clear that they want someone who can win a divisional series for them. And I think that's what they're trying to do. Yeah, um, it's kind of – I just think – because when you're going up against, as you said, the defending World Series champion, the Cubs. You got the Dodgers, who looked absolutely unstoppable this postseason. We're going to get into them later. But just, it's hard to win. I mean, you can't be expecting a World Series every year. But um, I remember, I can't remember the exact record that Dusty Baker has in, I think it's elimination games. He's like O for his last seven or something like that. So, Gina, I think you brought up a good point. They want someone who can win. And obviously, they just have not gotten out of the divisional round, so maybe they're looking for a new face um, to do that. And, Caleb, you mentioned um, Daniel Mur- the aging on this roster. You have Daniel Murphy, 32, Max Scherzer, 33, Ryan Zimmerman, 33, Gio Gonzalez, 33. This team is getting old. So you maybe look to build pieces around Harper, hopefully. Um, but if he leaves, it could be a complete rebuild for the Nationals. And kind of a – I'd be happy to see that because maybe that means the Braves could jump them. But, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a, a man can hope. But, all right. Well, the hopefully Dusty Baker, do you think maybe he finds another job or was this his last stint? I don't, I don't think it'll be hard for him to find a job. I mean, there are going to be plenty. I mean, he may not be able to get the managing position that he wants, mm-hmm. but I mean, I'm sure someone could use like a pitching coach or a first base coach, because Dusty Baker could be that guy. Yeah, I think he's too well liked around this league to just not have a job. Yeah, I think he'll fit somewhere. Okay, yeah, maybe Dusty... he is a bench coach for the Astros. <laughs> <laughs> the Astros will be looking for a bench coach, so there you go. That'd be a perfect role, I think, for him. All right, well, the move that shocked the baseball world, I think, um, came. I think on Wednesday or mm. Thursday. I can't remember exactly mm. when it happened. But the Yankees announced um, shortly after their uh, ALCS loss to the Astros, which they came just one game away from the World Series, um, they announced that Joe Girardi will not be returning as their manager. In his 10 seasons with the Yankees, Girardi went 910 and 710, obviously highlighted by that World Series championship in 09. Um, as I mentioned, the Yankees were one game away, just one game from the World Series. Um, they looked to be ahead of their time. No one thought they would be this good this early. Um, so, Gina, was do you think this was the right decision, or what were your thoughts when you heard that Girardi won't be back? At first, I thought it was the wrong decision, but I think when I started to, I read reports on how even though you know he was the manager for ten seasons, there was starting to be problems within mm-hmm. between the general manager and Girardi. So I really think that the problems with within the organization were too much to handle for um, the for the managers and for the executives. So I think that's part of why they let him go. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's a smart move. I think they have a lot of history with Girardi. I think he's done a lot for this ball club. But I've also, um, I've also, re- I just read an article. I think um, can't remember. I think it was MLB.com. But what um, what players and managers were starting to saying around the clubhouse is that he was getting too rigid around his Yankee ball club members. So I think that's why they ultimately let him go. I don't know mm-hmm. if it's the smartest decision, but I think it was just um, an internal decision that they had to make. Yeah, Caleb, your thoughts when you heard this news? Kind of like Gina. Like, at first I was like, what? Why? There's no... Yeah. But then uh, at Mark Teixeira opened my eyes when he did an interview before Game 3 last night of the World Series. So that Girardi is a very driven man to be the best, and he's not the greatest with younger players. And this team he's is young. 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 Mm-hmm. He, like uh, Mark said, he's never really been the guy that could teach the youngsters. It was usually up to him and Jeter and... Alex Rodriguez. Yeah, he had and, old veterans that could kind of do the work for him. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And on, but on, and on the other hand of the argument, the Yankees were one win mm-hmm. away from the World Series, arguably one inning away from the World Series. Yeah. Was it the sixth or seventh that got away from them? Uh, <laughs> it's it's <laughs> yeah, hard. I mean, we're all thinking, yeah. it, it's it's really hard. Um, I I think they it couldn't hurt to use a younger face in there. Um, 
10 seasons is a long time um, to be a manager, especially now in today's age um, when we just mentioned the Nationals, who four managers in six seasons. So it seems like teams are starting to go through these managers a lot more. Um, yeah. But I think if it was a, the Yankees made – hopefully the right decision because as we mentioned this team is getting younger and right. i think girardi can't really manage that although i will give girardi major major props because when he first took over the yankees he had to go through the whole alex rodriguez scandal <laughs> and then we all know how ridiculous that was he had to go through the retirement of Derek jeter he had to replace Monty R. rivera um and he, he did it with this team. Yeah, and he look what he's done with this team. And he has really set this team up for success, whoever this next manager. Right, and I, I, I have two points that are for Girardi. Yeah, go because right I, I came up with an argument for both sides. For Girardi, uh, you mentioned it, this team was far ahead of schedule. Mm-hmm. I mean, people expected the Yankees two or three years from now to be doing what they did. And... The second point, who did they beat in the ALDS? Cleveland. That team, everybody thought was winning the World Series this year. I thought they were winning the World Series. I thought they were destined to win. And this team beat them. I I don't know. I guess the front office was like, you know, it's time for a new face. Ten seasons. I mean, it was a great run. Who knows? Maybe he goes to Washington. (laughs) (laughs) There are are lots of um, options out there if he still wants to manage, um, obviously. Because right. I, I use Ron Washington as the prime example because he's with us. Um, the great ra- former Rangers manager found him. I believe he's our third base coach now. So he, older managers are now finding success maybe as a lesser role, but they're still helping out a team. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Girardi and just where they go from here and where the Yankees go from here. And this um, brought up an interesting question that – I'm going to go off script for a second. Um, brought up an interesting question to me. As we mentioned earlier with the Nationals, four managers, six seasons. Um, I think it was maybe Mark Teixeira talking about it um, when we were watching the game, Caleb. But managers are exp- are under more pressure now than I think ever to win because you see, as we just mentioned, more and more managers getting fired. So do you guys think that – Gina, you, we can start with you on this one. Uh, there are more pressure on managers to produce and be kind of, I think Mark Desher also mentioned, like a uh, organizational role, be like the assistant to the GM or something like that. Take on that kind of approach. Do you think there's more pressure on them now than ever? Oh, I definitely think so. And I really think that this is a time where you think organizations are not messing around. Mm-hmm. I mean, to go back to Girardi, I mean, 10 seasons, you know, he's put this team up to, great levels of success and you know just by losing that one game and getting so close to the world series i mean they let someone pretty big in the organization go and you know you see it with the nationals and just every other team that we've talked about the organizations are looking for someone to deliver and so i really think that this is a word being heard around the whole you know mlb and they want people who can deliver and win Mm -hmm. caleb your thoughts on this if there's more pressure than ever on managers nowadays uh, well, that's definitely true because apparently you only get two years before you're fired. <laughs> like, and it's 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 ridiculous. Like, cause she like cause like she mentioned Joe Girardi, ten seasons, a World Series in '09, and he went through all of that. You know the the whole scandal and Jeter and and they were still able to do what they did. And the fact that they lost one game kicked uh, kicked him right out. It's it's it just makes you wonder how many managing changes there will be in the coming years. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, at this rate, I could see every team having a new manager in like five years. It's ridiculous. See, I think the two managers that are safe right now, um, are Joe Madden. I, I like Joe Madden. I think he, I think he's good for the, organization. yeah, I think he's good. And Terry Francona. Those are the only oh. two that I think are 100% safe. Because uh, unless they like completely fall off a cliff, which I don't see happening. To... Well, I mean, I, I kind of saw Madden losing his mind this year, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in the playoffs, let's just say. I mean, I know we're going to talk about it in a little bit, but yeah, it was go... just it was disappointing as is. But um, 
No, I, I agree with you, Cody. I think he's safe. I think he's safe. Yeah, these two, those two are top-tier managers, just top of the class. And so those two, I think, are safe. The rest, who knows? Because when you, there's no telling what the organization is thinking. So if they're in a winning mentality, say, we want to win now, and we don't care what the competition is like, um, you have – if teams think they have the assets to get done and the managers aren't producing – they're going to hope the new manager will be looking for a new job here soon. So that's – it's just weird with all these three postseason teams. Just – it's so strange to me because you made the postseason. You're having success. Only one team can win the World Series. Not every team is going to win the World Series every year. It just can't happen. So managing is definitely harder – than it has been, if you ask me. And so, all right, well, we have to recap the championship series real quick right before we dive into our World Series talk. Um, So we're going to start off with the NLCS, and unfortunately, with your guys' Cubs, um, they just ran into the dominant force that is the Los Angeles Dodgers. Um, Dodgers took care of the Cubs in five games, after an absolutely dominant game five when they won 11 to one um Caleb what does this say about the Dodgers who just m- no I don't mean to rub you guys the wrong way or anything but just manhandled the defending World Series champions just had to throw that in there, <laughs> didn't you? it it was a manhandle <laughs> it really was I, I don't it think really was, was. I, I, I can't I, disagree I definitely yeah. did not see that coming I figured it was going to be a competitive six games I didn't think it was going to be a blowout in five but I mean I wasn't one of the fans that was like oh it's comeback time after we won <laughs> game four because I mean no. come on it just wasn't going to happen the best point I have is the Dodgers obliterated the Cubs bullpen it wasn't even close nope not at all like Carl Edwards Jr. was our best in the regular season, and he couldn't he couldn't get a batter out in that series. Mm-hmm. Granted, he struggled against the Nationals too, but those are two great batting teams. Yeah. Uh, but to me, what this means is the Dodgers made a statement, and it wasn't one of those one year statements. This was a watch out NL, we're here, and this is our league now mm-hmm. kind of a statement. I'm calling it. The Dodgers are not going anywhere. This could be the start of a dynasty in L.A. They're young. Just all this put together. This team is as young as the Yankees. The youth of the Dodgers, the dominating pitching staff and pitchers, great coaching staff, and the experience that a few old guys on the team have just make for a dominant team. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Maybe in two or three years we see a Dodgers-Yankees World Series. Wouldn't that be something? Two of the most historic franchises in MLB. Yeah. Um, I've just think watching because we watch most of the games um just that Dodgers offense is just something I've never seen because you have Justin Turner who needs a haircut <laughs> needs a haircut <laughs> maybe needs to shave but as if, long as if the they team's keep, winning yeah I was about I to say, as long as they keep winning I mean I we've seen some crazy things happen like oh if we keep winning I won't do this but right. um this was just an overall dominant display from the Dodgers you have it was so dominating that Jake Arrieta shaved his beard after the series <laughs> <laughs> I, but yeah the combination of Kershaw um Darvish who struggled in game three of well, the World Series but we'll get into that in a little bit um just and the offense is led what was scary is I believe they did this without Corey Seager in the in the CS they have him back now for the World Series but they're all-star young stud of a shortstop they were just dominating pitching without him um this team as you mentioned they have so many young talent Corey Seager Jock Peterson uh Cody Bellinger I remember I think they this may be the year I think they've won three straight rookie of the years for because it just shows how talented that farm system is I love how people don't talk about the Dodgers farm system at all because these guys have to come from somewhere, right? Right, and some people would even say, arguably, the Dodgers were flying under the radar this year. I mean, after – they came back down to earth, I think, after that losing streak to end the season because, mm-hmm. obviously, they had that ridiculous run after the All-Star break. But um, just an overall dominant 
play of baseball is the only way I can describe it. Um, Gino, what did you take away from this series about the Dodgers? Well, this whole series, I mean, as a Cubs fan, I mean, you were kind of on edge with every at-bat. I mean, as a defense, it's just, like you said, it's dominant forces on, you know, you can't just... You know, when you get to the end of your lineup, you're like, okay, it's the eighth, you know, eighth, ninth batter. It's like, you know what, we're going to be okay. But, I mean, the Dodgers overall, they couldn't, the Cubs could not stop the Dodgers hitting at all. And I really think it showed, um, forget what game, but when Joe Madden pulled Dunsing out in the seventh inning, seventh or eighth inning, and put Lackey in to finish the game, I think, I really think that that was the turning point when Justin Turner hit that walk-off off of Lackey. I really think that was a turning point for the Cubs, and the Dodgers are like, okay, we're the team, mm-hmm. we're here to stay. Dunsing was pitching great, though. I know, and I think that was the probably one of the most um, questionable decisions that Madden had in that postseason. But, um, you know, I mean, in the last game, Dodgers went 11-1. to I mean, that that's a statement right there. That's not just a win. That's a Behind statement. Behind the emergence of one Kiki Hernandez who just <laughs> – that was the game he hit three home runs. Oh, I yeah. Mean, I think. Yeah. He had yeah a, that's what I thought. He had two two solos and a grand, and a grand slam. That's yep. crazy. It, 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 I remember we were flipping back and forth through some sports. And Actually, no. The last one was a two-run shot. And we just turned back and were like, oh, it's mm-hmm. – Eight to one. What the heck just happened? And so, this Dodgers team is just ridiculously talented. Um, wanna since you both are Cubs fans, I want to dive into this real quick. Um, what does what's the state of the Cubs going forward? Do you guys think are they? But do you think they're gonna stay right where they're at and be contenders, or where do you see the state of the Cubs? Either one of you, um, it does matter. <laughs> well, uh, it's no doubt we're losing Arietta. Oh, there's no question. Um, he hasn't even made an attempt to be like, oh, there's a possibility. No, he's like, yeah, bye. <laughs> 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 uh, so I think that the Cubs, unless they can get a few free agents, it's, this this pitching crew is gonna gonna fall apart this next year. I think I I, I think we'll make the playoffs. Probably as a wild card team. I definitely see uh, a young and talented St. Louis team next year mm-hmm. winning that division, but that's beside the point. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Cubs are going to struggle with their pitching. Their bullpen has got to get better. We our, our bats will be fine. We we have plenty of hitters. Yeah, because you have Bryant, Rizzo, and then, I, yeah, I so agree. Your offense is fine. It's the pitching that I've kind of worried about. Uh, Gina, what do you think the state of the Cubs is? Well, I think. I mean, what kind of scared me was obviously the pitching, and uh, Jake Arrieta is going to leave, no doubt about that. It's just who they're going to replace him with. I mean, he was a dominant force for the Cubs, and I'm just I'm anxious to see who they're re- who they're going to replace him with, and also if I mean if the Cubs bats can deliver next year. I mean, um, as you said, Chris Bryant, Rizzo, dominant forces, but I mean there were games where Bryant you know goes 0 for four or Rizzo, with four strikeouts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's not just like oh you know fly out. It's it's strikeouts, as Caleb yeah, said. Yeah, not putting the ball in play. It's not putting the ball in play, and I really think that they need to work as much on their pitching <laughs> as their batting in the offseason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, It'll definitely uh, be interesting uh, to see where they go from here. I know. Because uh, Rizzo led the Cubs with, what was it, 38, 39 home runs this year. Mm-hmm. Had batted in like 107. And then in the postseason, him and Bryant, our two big forces were – Gone. They just didn't show up. Mm-hmm. I think the first hit that um, Chris Bryant had in the NLCS came in Game Five. Like I'm pretty sure that's how that worked. <laughs> yeah, it definitely was a disappointing for Cubs fans. Obviously, coming up the high of winning the World Series mm-hmm. last year, um, I I can't really speak on it because I'm not a Cubs fan. I don't know too much about the team or what that goes on inside that clubhouse, but you have Joe Madden, who is one of the most genius people in the game. Um, I don't know exactly how long he plans to be managing. Um, Who knows what will happen there. I don't know how long is left on his contract or anything, but I think as long as guys have Joe Madden, you have a shot because Madden is one of the most, one of the most brilliant minds in baseball. Um, And you guys mentioned the pitching Yes, it could use some work. I would spend the bulk of free agency maybe working on a uh, some couple or a levers and maybe obviously replacing Arietta 
because I'm get he's a free agent this season. I'm get is yes. he a free yes. agent? Yes. Okay. So maybe trying to look for some winning once another ring or more money or whoever will offer him a good contract. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for the NL, so we're going to switch over to the AL real quick. Um, where this series, what can you say about it? The ALCS between the Houston Astros and the New York Yankees, they played seven very competitive games. Um, most teams thought the Yankees couldn't even hang with the red-hot Houston Astros coming into this ALCS. And I was one of those people. <laughs> I was, too. I I think I predicted Astros in five. Astros I'm in pretty six. sure. I was in Astros in six, yeah. 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 I predicted a sweep. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, the, um, the Astros just broke away in Game 7 from a dominant outing from starter Charlie Morton. And who would have thought Charlie Morton? That, because... I was talking with Caleb. Morton and McCullers pitched yeah. in that game. Um, I said when the Yankees were up 3-2 in this series, okay, if you get that game six win behind, I believe it was Verlander, who are you throwing out there for game yeah. seven? Um, so, But Charlie Morton was more than up to the task. He pitched a very good game. And then obviously Lance McCullers Jr. shut the door and the Astros clinched the pennant. Um the Astros, as I mentioned, were down three games to two before winning the last two, obviously. Um, this team never gave up in this series. They said they jumped out, I believe, they jumped out to a 2 0 lead, got down 3 2, and just shows the resilience of this team. Um, so, Gina, is this a team, do you think, destined <laughs> to win the World Series, or do you think it was more on the Yankees that? didn't do enough to close the door when they had the Astros down 3-2. Well, I definitely think the Astros are capable of winning the World Series, no doubt about it. But I really think that the Yankees kind of just ran out of gas in that Game 7. Mm-hmm. I mean, only contributing three hits, not really much to say in that Game 7. But as you mentioned, I mean, Charlie Morton, who would have thought? Mm-hmm. I mean, after his previous start, he gave up seven runs. So he was kind of a questionable person to put out there. But um, he did the job. And I really think uh, throughout the whole series, you know, the works of Aaron Judge... Um, I know Gregoria stepped in, you know, Greg Bird, all these um, all these Yankee players really stepped in. And, I mean, I think that in the end, what I was thinking in the end, that obviously the Astros were going to win, but I really think the Yankees gave it a great shot. But um, I think it was a short-lived run, mm-hmm. and I think it was kind of, you know, if we're going if we're gonna connect this to basketball, kind of like a Cinderella story type yeah. of thing. <laughs> like but, a Cinderella um, team that makes a run in March Madness. Yes, yes. Yeah. Overall, I just I just don't think that the Yankees could compete with the Astros' dominance. Mm-hmm. Caleb, what were your thoughts on this series in general? With the 2017 Astros, you have that 2016 Cubs mentality of it's meant to be. The Yankees could have done better in the series, especially on offense. The bats were cold in game six and seven, but they were red hot in their home games. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cody can vouch for me when I say this. After Game Three, when the Yankees won, I said the home <laughs> team's winning every game in this series yep. now. And because we were watching, we've been watching most of the postseason games together, and so it's just been. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but oh no, just no, no, you're been fine. The Houston Astros. I'm gonna mention this er- later when we talk about the World Series. Um, the Houston Astros are seven and zero at home this postseason. So, um. It's just ridiculous what they've done at home, and no matter who they throw out there, whether it's Keuchel or whether it's Lance McCullers or Charlie Morton, that it just seems to channel the energy of the crowd and just get them the win, oh, no yeah. matter what they have to do. Sorry to the, interrupt you, Caleb. After that game four, when the Yankees tied the series, I, I decided the Astros were going to win that game or win that series in seven because the Yankees wouldn't be able to win on the road. They had one road win in the postseason. Granted, it was game five against the Cleveland Indians, but you you can't just not win on the road. Yeah. That's Especially the Yankees, who were going to be on the road most of their postseason. One player that stood out to me was Jose Altuve in that series. He lit up the Yankees. Mr. MVP. Not a, of course. Yeah, <laughs> not a single pitcher could stop him. I think what wait, was it might have been in the first series, yeah, against the Red Sox, he had three home runs. Yeah, that was off Chris Sale too. I, right, I, I, and I mean, he, so. if he's hitting three home runs off Chris Sale, no one in that Yankees organization is going to stop that. Mm. Yeah, I just, um, it was a bit overwhelming for the Yankees. I think to be in this position, I didn't. That's 
Joe Girardi, I think, had his team ready because he's been in that situation before. But it's hard when you have such a young team to get them ready for it because not most of these kids haven't even been in the playoffs, so let alone a Game 7. So it's kind of... And, yeah, yeah, and, and the Astros talked about who was really like the leader of mm-hmm. the team. And you know, a lot of people would say, oh, it's easily Altuve. I've had someone tell me it was Correa. No, they say that it's Brian McCann. He's B-Mac, he's the older B-Mac. he's an older guy on the organization. He's a veteran. He knows what's happening. Granted, this is his first World Series too, but just the experience that he has all throughout his years playing with Atlanta and heck yeah, <laughs> he they they just decided that he was the guy. Granted, he hasn't been hitting very well no, this postseason, hasn't. but because he was able to get Alex Correa going, which really helped the Astros. In those two uh, clinching games at home in the ALCS. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's nice to have. Um, sorry, I was putting my water down there for a second. My voice kind of died. <laughs> but um, I c- kind of like to think of Brian McCann as your David Ross from last year. Um, mm-hmm. I-, I think David Ross was a better, little bit better hitter, and he could produce a bit more than Brian McCann can at this point in his career. But still, you have that veteran presence who can light a team and just get them going. And I think um, Brian McCann has done that his entire career. He helped our young pitchers in Atlanta before he left to the freaking Yankees at Trader. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm still rooting for the Astros because I want Brian McCann and also Evan Gaddis. Um, El Oso Blanco, to, <laughs> <laughs> that's the name we gave him in Atlanta, um, to win a World Series. So... They obviously deserve to be in the World Series. They were probably the best team in baseball this season. I and thought it was great because, like, going back to last year, you mentioned David Ross. Jake Har- <laughs> Arrieta and Rizzo always called him Papa Ross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it you have – and I think it, it B-Mac got his name B-Mac Daddy after he had his first kid. Um, so he's kind of like the elder statesman of the group. So – Always nice to have that veteran presence. And the Astros obviously moved on to the World Series in a very, very great series. Props to the Yankees, though, real quick. Because as we talked about earlier, we didn't think they would be Get this. the Indians. Yeah, they beat the I mean, Cleveland Indians, who everyone was thought at the beginning, oh, who you picking to win the World Series? Oh, it's going to be Cleveland. Well, the Yankees quickly... Um, Shut that door. And he shut that door and <laughs> proved everyone wrong. So props to the Yankees who, as we said, are light years ahead of where they should be. And it's going to be interesting to see who leads them um, to this bright future that they have going forward. All right. Well, obviously, it's World Series time. So we're going to talk some World Series. Um, we've already had three games so far, and they've been – Pretty good so far. Um, Obviously, in game one, you had the magician himself, Clayton Kershaw. Um, Just look like his dominant self. He's easily putting those postseason woes behind him. I remember in our group chat that we have going on, Tommy was like, I don't want to hear how he can't pitch in the postseason again because Clayton Kershaw, he's put those demons behind him. Um, He struck out 11 and 7 innings pitched. Um, Justin Turner, who we mentioned briefly earlier, who's just on an absolute tear, hit a two-run home run, bottom of the sixth, to seal the game in game one. Um, In game two, though, both teams came out swinging for the fences, literally, because they broke a World Series record and hit eight home runs combined. In Dodger Stadium. Yeah, which is normally... One of the hardest places to hit. Exactly. Um, Which was like, over 100 degrees, too, so you wouldn't think the ball would be flying out as much as it did. Um, but this was an absolute thriller in Game 2. With it going into extra innings, um, the Astros ended up taking it in the 11th after George Springer hit a two-run shot um, to seal the victory. I remember they just kept trading runs in, like, the 9th, 10th, and yeah. it was ridiculous to on. see. Um, but, so, yeah, the Astros tied it in Game 2 to make it 1-1, and then all of this was after a rare Kenley Jansen blown save, which we never see. They just pounded him 
and K- Kenley Jansen had one of those rare games that you rarely see from a great closer like him. Um, then in Game 3, what can you say about the Astros? And they just made you Darvish look absolutely terrible. Um, through four innings, they chased him through two innings, excuse me, after they pounded him for four runs. Um, and it was just a dominant performance by that offense early on. Um, I think the story of the night, though, came from Houston and the reliever Brad Peacock, who relieved Lance McCullers Jr., who we talked about earlier. Um, he threw three and two-thirds of hitless ball and just shut down that red-hot Dodgers offense. Um, so going into game four, which is tonight, actually, the Astros are up 2-1 in this series. Um, the game four, you will see Alex Wood for the Dodgers um, taking on Charlie Morton. This game will be in Houston, as we mentioned, where the Astros are undefeated. They are a perfect 7-0. and um, Caleb, what do you think the Dodgers have to do to get back into this series? Well, it all starts with pitching. Because <laughs> let's let us let us all be honest real quick. Last night, Darvish sucked. I mean, it was, he was not, not good. He was not the dominant force it, he's used to being. It yeah. was let's when be clear. outside of Kershaw, because I mean Kershaw's Kershaw. You know? <laughs> <laughs> can't mess with Kershaw now. No, yeah. like, and and I'll argue that Rich Hill looked out of sync in game two. He did mm-hmm. not look like himself. So this pitching crew needs to find itself again and definitely needs to do it quick. And the Dodgers also have to get their bats going again. You can't just rely on Puig, Seager, and Turner to win this series because that's just not what is because that's not what's going to happen. Here's an interesting stat: Andre Ethier, Jock Peterson, and Chris Taylor. Guess how many hits they have in this World Series combined? Probably none. Zero. None. Hmm. All three of them, and that's not going to win the World Series. And Chase Utley and Cody Bellinger have are, are combined two hits and thirty at bats. That's not what you expect from no, the rook of the year who no, just this, tore up the regular season. Right, so just overall this offense needs to wake up or the Astros will be hoisting a trophy by Monday. Um, Gino, what were your original thoughts on what we've seen so far and um, what can the Dodgers do to get back? Well, to be honest, I thought it would be more the show of the Dodgers offense. And, I mean, the game last night, it was just incredible how well um, the Astros pitching crew did. I mean, to chase down this Dodgers offense and limit them mm-hmm. is just an incredible thing. And I, although I think the series is going to carry out, I, yeah. um, I know we're going to predict in a little bit, but I think the series is going to carry out, and eventually the Dodgers are going to find themselves again. But I just after last night, it was just it was shocking to see for me at least. Yeah, because we're n- we're not used to seeing a pitcher dominate this Dodgers offense. If um, a team usually beats the Dodgers. It's because they out hit them on a night, and it's usually a shootout um, with teams just hitting ball out of the ballpark, driving in runs left and right against the Dodgers. Um, and it's usually when I think where the Dodgers struggle the most, obviously, um, Rich Hill. Yeah, the game in Game Two. I, I don't think Rich Hill has a fastball in his arsenal because <laughs> it seemed like every pitch he was throwing was a curve, a slider. Or and they were usually hanging in the zone, yeah, which is where not where you want them. He can just, or pitchers, or excuse me, hitters can just crush it. Um, and that's not what you want with this Astros team who has power all throughout the lineup. Um, I think this Houston team has pounded the uh, relievers for the Dodgers. And that's, I think, kind of one of the keys that the Dodgers need to get going. I think, obviously, you can't rely on Clayton Kershaw to get you seven every night because, obviously, Clayton Kershaw can't pitch every night. (laughs) If he could, this would probably be a different series. Um, But Alex Wood tonight has got to have his A game because if they go down 3-1, it won't look pretty. I don't think they're in position to pull off what Boston pulled off um, against the Yankees, I believe, in that, that was a while back ago when Kurt Schilling had the blood, bloody sock game and they came back from, I believe it was 3-0 down. Yeah. Um, but I just don't see... It was the ALCS, right? I, I think it was, yes, again, the Yankees. Um, but the World Series is obviously a different animal. Um, they have Kershaw... If they need him, I would think because Kershaw is used to pitching on red or on 
not many days rest because it's the World Series. You got to throw everything out there um, because if you don't, you're probably going to be sending or watching the other team celebrate. All right, so we mentioned the Astros are up 2-1. Game four is tonight. Um, obviously, the World Series will be finished before we meet next next week. So let's go ahead and predict the rest of the series. Caleb, we'll start with you. Who do you got, and how long do you think this series lasts? This is, series is going to be a classic because you have the Astros who have the mentality of last year's Cubs with the men to be on their shoulders. But I, the young Dodgers are not going to let this slip away. The, uh, the Dodgers will find their groove. Kershaw will continue to be Kershaw, and the rest of the offense will wake up their bats. I got the Dodgers in seven. Dodgers and seven. Sorry, but, Astros. The Dodgers are looking to start a dynasty <laughs> no, here. There's no shame against picking against this Astros team because obviously I don't think you can go wrong with your pick because if you're wrong, I mean, both teams are red hot and their bats are clicking right now. So it just, it's a very hard series to predict. I personally, if I had to pick, I'm going with my heart. I'm saying Houston because I I think that they. Once you get past Kershaw, they've roughed up Darvish already. So why can't they do it again if Darvish ends up starting again? Um, as I said, Kershaw can't pitch every game. So, And if you get dominant starts from uh, Keuchel or Verlander, which we know Verlander is capable of doing, um, although for Houston they will have to win on the road if they want to um, win this series, because, which is something they've struggled to do, but I think if they could get one game on the on the road, if they especially if they go up three one tonight, um, so I got Astros. I will say, I'll say seven because I think the Dodgers can eventually. Well, eventually um, Kershaw has to pitch again. So three, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Kershaw has. It's to going pitch at again. least six. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, I got Astros in seven. Gina, who you got? Well, I got to agree with you on this one, Cody. I have Astros in seven as well, and I really think that tonight and the whole rest of the series, pitching is going to be key. Mm -hmm. I mean, as you said, both teams are just on hot streaks with their hitting, and I think this matchup between Wood and Morton is going to be the key because I think Morton is on a high right now from his last start. Exactly. Um, and I think Wood has a challenge, but I also think that this Dodgers team, as Caleb mentioned, is no joke. I mean, I can agree with him where this this dynasty is just coming up for the Dodgers. But um, I think at the end of the day, the Astros, I really think that there's something about the Astros team that will make, like he said, with the Cubs mentality, that will just make them go to seven games. And I do believe they can win on the road because, I mean, they won, uh, they won the other night. I think it was through 11. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. through 11. But um, I have to agree with you. Let's go yeah. to Astros in seven. Definitely going to be. So, okay. I think that uh... – Tonight, tonight the Astros are going to win. Sorry, Al, Al, Alex Wood, I, I can't see it. He and then they'll be up three one, but then Kershaw pitches again, and right there is three two. And then Rich Hill will find his groove. There's three three, and now you got a U Darvish who got roughed up, who will more he, than likely be the game seven mm -hmm. starter. So, and that's personally why I think the Astros will. They have the tools to. They can just look at the uh, game three film and be like we did this against him he likes to throw this in this situation and look at all the film if they roughed him up once they can do it again right um, well you, I, same could be said about charlie morton a, exactly in game seven of that alcs this is a he just could not get to him again it's a very um in unpredictable world series yes. because you never know what's going to happen they may throw kershaw out of the bullpen. Oh, I guarantee you he'll be coming out of that oh, bullpen. Oh, definitely. Yeah, he'll definitely. be coming out of the bullpen at some point because it's Kershaw. And props to Dave Roberts, who has really used him well. Um, I wasn't for sure exactly what I was going to see from Dave Roberts as a manager, um, obviously after replacing Don Mattingly. But he stepped up and I think has managed the team better than Mattingly has. Um, so definitely an interesting World Series um, we hope you guys watch it. We all definitely will. Um, Dodgers in seven, Astros in seven, and Astros in seven is our predictions. Um, regardless, it's been a heck of a World Series. It's been a heck of a baseball season, and either team is really is truly 
destined or not destined, but they definitely did. Ugh, I'm struggling with words. Oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> deserve to win the World Series. All right, as we always do to wrap up the show, um, we like to feature our late analyst who gives us their hot take. So, Caleb, what are you hot on today? Today's hot take is presented not by Paul Goldschmidt. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. Unfortunately. As much he's... as it would be great. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, no, today is which player is more valu- valuable to their team, Justin Turner or Jose Altuve? Ooh. Ooh. And okay. it seems easy to point out because Altuve is the best hitter in baseball, and he is a team leader. But if you look at that roster, Correa is a great player. Verlander is a good player. Keuchel's a leader on that team. Justin Turner does not have all of that in L.A. He's had the job to take and handle a young team in their whirl of emotions throughout this postseason. Yasiel Puig was a leader for this team, but his struggles over the recent years have left it all on the shoulder, shoulders of Justin Turner. Get this man a leadership trophy because he deserves every bit of it. He's the most reliable player in baseball on any team. If Turner is off, the Dodgers are off. If Turner uses the bathroom, the Dodgers use the bathroom. (laughs) If Turner hits a home run, the Dodgers hit a home run. So with that being said, Justin Turner will be my 2020 vote for president. (laughs) (laughs) Sponsored by Justin Turner? Sponsored by... Justin Turner and not Paul Goldschmidt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a definitely an interesting conversation, and I probably would say I have to agree with you because you, t- I, the way I like to approach this is take Altuve off the Astros. They still have a pretty good team. Obviously, they're going to struggle a little bit in some areas, obviously, that Jose succeeds in. But take Justin Turner off the Dodge, especially this postseason, because – He's just been on a tear. He, I believe he's hitting like three, oh, well over 300, has four home runs, and he's driving in runs, um, which m- most of the Dodgers really haven't. They, I mean, you have Chris Taylor who's shown flashes of greatness. You have <laughs> He has one home run every so often. <laughs> yeah, he hits a home run every yeah. now and then. Yeah. Um, but then you have Puig who... Who I, makes out with his bats? <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I, just, I, I don't, just I don't get I don't get the bat licking. That's a little yeah yeah I don't understand what that's going on. But we could talk about that for <laughs> <laughs> we could spend an entire show on Yasiel Puig probably. But the dude's got a cannon for an arm. His defense is ridiculous, but his bat seems to it's struggles. His bat's fifty fifty. Yeah, and so that's why I believe that Justin Turner is like the more reliable guy on. To his team, at least. Because, yeah, El Tuve will probably end up winning the AL MVP. Um, but Justin Turner, you take him off the Dodgers, especially this postseason, it's tough because I don't see them getting to the World Series without Justin Turner. I mean, you don't postseason. get most of your wins without Justin Turner. Exactly. Like. You don't have that walk off win. Yeah. You don't have some of the other wins, which he's like hit home a, runs. Another walk off win in the NLCS mm-hmm. over the Cubs. It's just he's been that constant force in that lineup, and I would personally probably I consider walking him like every right. time he comes up because he's just shown that presence and power this postseason that not many people have shown on the Dodgers. Yeah, going back to the NLDS, he was the first guy to wake up against Paul Goldschmidt's <laughs> <laughs> Arizona Diamondbacks. And yeah, he, ever since, they just – have not been un- – they've, they've been unstoppable because Justin Turner's bat is alive. Yeah, I – if you were asked me going into this postseason who is going to lead the Dodgers, my vote – Justin Turner may have been up there, but I would have said Cody Bellinger. That's, because what, I, that's what I was thinking, exactly the, that. The kid tore up pitching throughout the regular season. He's clearly <clears> – <throat> excuse me – going to win Rookie of the Year in the National League, but – he has been. See, I at the beginning of the postseason, I said it would have been Puig because yes, Bellinger had the bat that was alive, but he's a rookie. It doesn't. I mean, and he's Puig, still to me had found his groove, and he. I mean, he has. He hasn't been bad this postseason. He's just not the leader that yeah. Justin yeah. Turner is. Mm-hmm. So we could pick. There are so many leaders to pick from, obviously, because you have. Chase Utley, who can pro- maybe Utley, provide that. Corey veteran. Seager, even. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's. Dodgers just ridiculously talented, as well are the Astros. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time 
we have for today's show. Um, be sure to check out our old episodes on SoundCloud and on YouTube. Um, be sure to check out our other podcasts as well as we have all of your professional sports covered here at Cardinal Sports Live. Um, and be sure to check us out on Cardinal Sports Live as we all are members of, which we talk about Ball State Sports. We're not going to mention the football game from last let's or, not, let's or, not talk on about Thursday. That. We won't talk about that. <laughs> but, as, as I'm looking at the daily news, it says making a comeback. <laughs> we'll see. We could talk Ball State football later. But, um, yeah. Be sure to tune in next week when we will obviously recap the World Series and congratulate, obviously, the Dodgers or the Astros, whoever comes out on top. Um, And maybe we'll get into some award predictions and maybe start to talk some free agency because, obviously, that's a huge part of the baseball offseason. So that's what we're going to be doing probably next week. So be sure to tune in then. For Gina DeRazio and Caleb Houghton, I'm Cody Emerson. Have a great day, everybody.